Now let's get to the example for R454B and you can solve that on your own. So we have an R454B two-stage heat pump. We're in second stage. It's been running for about 20 minutes and this is during an initial installation. It has a short line set and so we're going to be measuring the refrigerant charge level with the subcoin method because the system is equipped with a TXV at the indoor coil. And so it's above, say, 70 degrees inside as a dry bulb temperature, and it's above about 90 degrees as an outdoor temperature. And so we made sure that the airflow is correct for this system. And so we're going to measure this refrigerant charge with the subcooling method. The first thing we need is a liquid pressure, and our pressure is 385.3 psi. And so we convert that to the saturated temperature on the liquid line, and we're looking at 118 degrees Fahrenheit. Our liquid line temperature is 102 degrees. Now let's look over at our vapor line temperature, 115.6 PSI on the large vapor line. We convert that to a saturated temperature of 44 degrees in the middle of that indoor coil. And so we also have a vapor line temperature of 52 degrees. And so now I'm going to pause the video while you're determining if this is undercharged, correctly charged, or overcharged, and then I'm going to give you the answers. So in order to figure this out, we take the liquid line pressure, convert it to saturated temperature, and we have 118 degrees as a saturated temperature. We take 118 minus 102 degrees liquid line temperature. So we're left with 16 degrees of actual subcooling. So that's kind of high. Now our target subcooling posted on the rating plate or posted on the underside of the shroud uh, is going to be 9 degrees as our target subcooling. So we are actually 7 degrees too high of subcooling and that means that we're overcharged. Uh, likewise, over at the indoor coil, we measure a saturated temperature of 44 degrees and a vapor line temperature of 52. So we take 52 minus 44, and we're left with eight degrees of total superheat. So we actually have just too much refrigerant in the system presently, and so we need to recover a little bit of refrigerant out of the system, and so that's gonna reduce the subcoin to a proper amount. And so also remember that if you are low on subcooling and you needed to add R454B into the system, you need to have this bottle flipped upside down so it exits the bottle as a liquid because it's a mix of R1234YF and R32. And so it has to stay as a mix, as a liquid. And so the only way to do that is with the bottle upside down, you can charge it a little bit at a time into the system or use a flashing device to vaporize the refrigerant after it exits the bottle before it enters that system because you don't want to slug that compressor with liquid refrigerant because it's only a short distance from where you have to charge this refrigerant into the system on the vapor line to where the compressor is in that system.